what we have a hard time as Christians. Check this out. The sins before and the sins after have been laid on Jesus. You've got to think about that. That does not give you the right to do whatever you want to do. But the next time the enemy's trying to fill you full of condemnation and say, you sorry sod, you said you weren't going to speed anymore, or you said you weren't going to talk that way to your coworker, or whatever the situation is, and you fall into that trap of sin, and it's sin, let's not mistake that. Somehow then you're going to, oh, I've got to work this out now. Jesus has paid for it. Receive it. Confess that. The Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. So you confess that to him. And you receive that by faith, just like the little guy in the chair here that's receiving Jesus. You receive that by faith. Now, a gift is not fully yours until you choose to receive it. Right? It's not fully yours until you choose to receive it. So, Acts 16. Let's go there. And uh, this was the jailer we were talking about. We're going to just look at this. Uh, we're going to go right through 27 to 31. Uh, well, we'll go to 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. The prisoners were listening to them. Let your light be light to the world. Don't let the enemy try and diminish your, your, your life and say you don't do anything for God. You don't do this. You don't do that. They were praying and singing hymns, and people were listening. I mean, you look at that positive and negative, right? It's important. People are always listening. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, and the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing that the prison doors were open, supposing that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice, saying, Do not... Do yourself any harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light, and he ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? This guy here, what must I do to be saved? The guy out in the parking lot, the guy that you walk by every day, single day, the guy that pumps your gas, what must I do to be saved? Now, religion will go, well, you're going to have to get your life, we try and clean the fish before we've caught them, right? We're going to, you better stop the drinking and you stop the smoking and you stop the carousing and you stop this and you stop that and then you get saved. No, this guy here, this is the ingredient. Those other things have been taken care of at the cross. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying the guy that's drinking and smoking and using and cussing, some of the most Important people, if you would, in the Bible, the fishermen, don't tell me they weren't cussing sailors. And Jesus blessed them. And he said, get away from me, for I'm a sinful man. He knew he was a sinful man. The point is this. When you bring Jesus into you, into your life, into who you are, those things will fall away. Those things will just fall away. I remember my dad telling me his testimony. Before he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he tried to quit. Smoking, it was three packs a day. That's a lot of cigarettes. Three packs a day. He'd throw them out the window because he knew, as a Christian, you shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't smoke. He'd throw them out the window. I can tell all these stories because my mom's not here. He'd throw them out the window, and he'd turn the car around and go back to the ditch and find the cigarette pack. Start up again. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and there was a time when he just, suddenly the revelation on the inside was, I don't need to do this smoked again. I'm not going to say the urge wasn't there. I don't know. But the point is this. When you release it all to God, God will change those things. Those things of garbage in our life. When we pursue Jesus, what must I do to be saved? What does to be saved mean to you? Is it just the guy sitting in the chair for salvation? Or is it the the bad habits that we don't talk about, or the things that we go, oh, I can't believe, you know, I, 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 I judge my neighbor, or I, I tend to be very resentful, or I tend to be th those things. Lord, what must I do to change those things? 
So let's x-ray that with the word here. And it said, um, and he brought the man out and said, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. So there's a covenant promise right there. When the enemy says, you know what, Sister Sally drinks like a fish and Uncle Harry, he just still, boy, I'll tell you what, he's as far away from God as you'll ever see. There's no hope there. Well, that's not the scripture. The scripture says, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. Now get this. I'm not suggesting that because you get saved, they're saved because of you. You need to get this. Payment has been made for them. They still need to receive it. Do you get that? Thanksgiving dinner will be on the table. But if Brother Paul wants to continue to drink his, do they still make OV? If, if he wants to continue to drink his beer and watch the football game and miss the meal, that's his choice. Bottom line is the meal was prepared. He was called to come. He was called to come and enjoy this banquet. He now has to choose. Do I watch the tube or do, do, do I go and have some turkey? So the onus is on him. Payment has been made. Dinner is ready. Jesus has paid for your sin, your setback, your worry, your fear, your sickness. Payment's made. Do you say, ah, I want to just do my friend thing for a while? You can do that. But you want to make sure you don't die in the meantime. Because <laughs> you'll wake up dead. I had a friend phone me this week. He was in this, this is a true story. He was on, a, on the, uh, he was paid to look after a sailboat in that hurricane. He's in, down in the States, and he called me, and it was breaking up. He said, oh, I can hardly hear you. And, and uh, he was actually in Teen Challenge for a month, and then he left, and he went back to, to habits that aren't good. And uh, I was pretty straight with him. I said, you know what, so what if you weather this storm? I said, bottom line is, I said, you need to know Jesus. And uh, I've done my part. And he survived the storm. I've heard from him. But, you know, it, it, what we need to realize is that the people in our lives, we need to present Jesus to them. And then they'll make their decisions. And we need to allow them to have their decisions. And that's probably the hardest thing. Because I wanted to reach through the phone and plunk them back into Teen Challenge and plunk them back into the road of recovery. But he doesn't want that right now. You know? Then he posted on Facebook last night that he missed the farm. He saw a picture of the girls clipping their calves. And, and I thought, I, th I saw that, and I thought, the Lord is working. The Lord is working. It's not the farm. It's not the girls. It's not calves. It's the Holy Spirit touching his heart, saying, mm -hmm. you need to come back. You need to come back. So when you see people today at Thanksgiving, and soon at Christmas, know that the Holy Spirit is touching their hearts. Know that their lives are being touched by Jesus all the time. Come to the table. Come to the table. Come to the table and receive. If it's not for them, there's also those areas of our lives that we struggle with and go, oh, is Lord, has he got anything for me? And Jesus says, I've got it all at the table for you. You need to receive. What must I do to be saved? All he needed to do was believe that payment has been made. Believe that payment has been made. And I'll close with this. Whatever you're believing God for, believe that payment has been made. So in that, if you believe that, you don't have to somehow rend the heavens and tore them open and knock open the gates of heaven. The gates are open. The Bible says that Jesus took and he won the keys back to death, hell, and the grave. It's an unlocked gate. He won the victory. It's an unlocked gate. Do you get that? The enemy's going to go, oh, see, he even likes us to get religious. you got to pray more. Maybe you need to get some rest and just love on your family. Maybe you need to just say, Lord, I'm just going to take your word and believe that. I have to, this, I'm preaching to me here. Because I get things rolling around in my head going, I got to do this, and I got to do this, and I got to do this, and then God's going to do this. I got to be like this guy here and say, no, I'm just going to receive what he said is mine. And for me, that is peace. That's wholeness in my back. Happiness in my head, right? Because Jesus has paid for it. Amen. Father, we just thank you for today. I thank you for your word that as we go forward and just allow your Holy Spirit to minister to us, that you would change us from the inside out. 
Lord, if there's any of us here today that are watching via YouTube that would say, Lord, I, I want to get saved. I want resurrection power. I want healing in my life. It starts with us receiving Jesus. And so if you would just pray with us right now and you could receive. If you believe this with your heart, you'd receive Jesus into your heart. It'd change your life. Repeat after me if you would. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you died for me. And I invite you in right now. I believe that all my sins are paid for. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. If you prayed that prayer today, send us an email. We'd love to send you some information.